Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Marketing Gyan Podcast. Your one-stop destination to explore the latest happening strategies, tools, techniques and the case studies in this digital marketing domain. I am your host Prince Kumar and we have Krishna Jaffe Inge, the founder of Fleek Marketing and author of Marketing Analytics, a comprehensive guide and marketing matrix with us today. Krishna has two decades of experience leading digital strategy and managing complex marketing technology projects. She served on the board of American Marketing Association as vice president of social media throughout much of 2000. She is a frequent and sought after speaker on web analytics, content strategy and SEO. Krishna has won numerous awards for her work including the Social Media Society, Social Media Star Award as well as the Future and Future of Marketing Award. She has been a mass challenger mentor and has served on board of IEEE Entrepreneurs Network. Hi Krishna, a warm welcome on our show and we are really excited to have you and discuss on the topic seven most important SEO metrics to measure performance. Thank you Prince I'm very excited to be here. So Krishna to start our conversation of the day uh you know uh, we would like to know a bit more about uh, you about your corporate journey and a bit about your agency. Oh well thank you. Um I got my start in marketing about 20 years ago. I was a copywriter um i was actually originally working for the first few years of my career as a journalist and then i got an opportunity through one of my editors where one of our advertisers was looking for someone to write detailed ad copy and she recommended me for the job i wrote my first ad around 1999 and mm-hmm. i've been writing ads since um but truly i think of myself as a content strategist and content marketer originally i mm-hmm. taught myself how to code back in the days when you could build a website in html uh went on to learn you know javascript wordpress and for many years worked doing web development and copywriting and slowly began to realize that if you can write well design okay and are good with technology that's called digital marketing And so I was a marketer before I even realized I was a marketer. And after that, I just started to explore um building a career in marketing. I've been very blessed. I've worked both in-house and ha- for agencies. And then I in 2014 decided that I was going to start my own agency. And I started Thoughtlight T H O U G H T L I G H T in 20 in spring of 2014 and okay. we've been successful ever since. We work with mostly mission driven organizations to help them with every aspect of their digital marketing from SEO and social media to content strategy which of course is critical to both as well as marketing automation where experts in HubSpot as well as very strong in Salesforce as well. So, it's been a wonderful journey so far. Um Sleek Marketing, I started that also in 2014 and that's our training arm where okay. we do both corporate e- training for groups of from one-on-one executive coaching in personal branding and marketing strategy all the way to 200 person events where we train entire groups of people on marketing we do that under the Sleek Marketing brand but my my agency my main business is called Thoughtlight Okay. Um, yes. Okay. Great. Glad to know about that. Uh so also your other achievement that is about your book. So we want to know more about your book Marketing Analytics. So if you can give a glimpse about that and also you'd like to know that is it for the business owners or it is for digital marketing? It's for both. I'm so glad you asked. And in fact, uh I have two books out now since we okay. last spoke. Um my first book is really where you should get started. It's called Marketing Analytics: A Comprehensive Guide. So clearly the title says it all. 
Um, that is a textbook from my wonderful publisher, Flat World. And um, that book t- walks you through channel by channel, tactic by tactic, um, every aspect of digital marketing analytics. It shows you how to gather your internal and external data. It learn. T- It teaches you about how to look at your SEO metrics, but also your social media metrics, your content, your mobile app, your email marketing, your digital advertising, even your video and your podcast marketing metrics. So those are the, those are chapter by chapter. It's 14 chapters. It's really, truly the Bible of how to do digital marketing analytics. Now, if you are more of a business manager or you want the more advanced, more strategic book, that's Marketing Metrics. That's out this fall. Um, It came out in September of this year from Kogan Page. And that builds on the first book. I think of them as you really should have both books. And I'm not just saying that because I want to sell you both books. Uh, They're meant to work together. Mm -hmm. One is The Guide, and that's the book you referenced, Marketing Analytics. And then Marketing Metrics is how to then take those metrics once you understand them and apply them as a manager. That is not a textbook. That is a management book. Got it. So, uh, since you have given a glimpse about that, can you also give uh, any top three reasons why you think that the readers or the digital marketers should go through, you know, both of your books? Absolutely. I think marketing analytics nowadays is critical to being an effective business owner or being an effective marketer. Uh, There's an old adage, of course, we've all heard it. You can't manage what you don't measure or you can't manage what you can't measure. I think that that is now even truer than it's ever been before. There are a multitude of different um, surveys out there. All of them will give you a different number of what percentage it is, but it's well over 70%, according to most surveys, of consumers will stop doing business with a brand if they don't have customized messages from that brand. So in other words, if they don't get any kind of customized, personalized content, they're going to stop doing business with your brand. And so what's really important is that you offer people those customized messages. And for that, you need data. That's just one example. You also need data in order to be able to understand the customer journey, in order to be able to understand where you're spending your marketing dollars effectively and where you're wasting your money so that you can get the most out of every dollar, which is in particular critical in these economic times. You need it. You need metrics in order to be able to understand what your competition is doing so you can meet any competitive threats and to understand the direction of your industry in order to anticipate industry trends and be the first on the market with new products and services. There is no aspect of marketing that data does not enhance. And so even if you don't buy my book, I have to say there's wonderful competing books out there. If you're not a book person, there's YouTube videos, there's podcasts such as yours, Prince. Regardless of how you consume that information, I'd love it if you bought my book. But more importantly, walk, don't run to get some reliable content on how to use marketing analytics, because if not, you will be left in the dust. Definitely, definitely. Trading and and analytics is something that is, you know, kind of a must for any of the marketers at the end. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, uh, now coming to the topic of today, that is more towards the SEO. So, do you think that in SEO, it is a bit complicated to measure the ROI compared to the other digital marketing activity, which can include the paid ads, email marketing, social media, or any other you know, activities? It's, oh, it is one of the slightly more complicated ways of complicated things to measure. It's not absolutely the most complicated, but when it comes to organic search, uh, yeah, there are complications um, in measuring things. One of which goes back to what I talked about before, the customer journey. At the end of the day, somebody might see you in a search result and not even click, but convert on some other channel and you won't necessarily know what drove that conversion. There's also 
The challenges in measuring any channel and organic search SEO is one of them where visibility is a critical part of the results that you get. How do you measure exactly, precisely down to the penny, the dollar value of being visible in front of consumers at the right time in the right way? You can certainly do things like measuring lift, however, that will help you get to that metric. Okay. Uh, now, coming to the seven most important SEO metrics. So we would love to know your thoughts on what do you think are the seven most important SEO metrics that can be used to measure the performance. Great question. So here's my big seven. And, and by the way, people often wonder, well, what are the metrics we should be measuring? What are the ones that actually tell us that we're moving the needle versus what are what I'd call vanity metrics? In other words, metrics that are truly just telling you, oh, I, I feel good about myself, right? We've, we've gotten people to see us. With SEO, it's a little bit more complicated because what may seem like a vanity metric, that is visibility, actually matters because part of the ROI of SEO is people seeing you um, and thinking of you and becoming top of mind. So that's the first metric right there is search impressions. How many times are you showing up in search results? That matters. It matters a lot. Search impressions are vital. So look to see whether your SEO efforts are actually leading to higher search impressions. That's going to help in terms of understanding um, where you are in succeeding with your SEO. If your search impressions are going up because you're putting forth that effort to rank higher on your top keywords, you're doing something okay. So that brings me to the second metric, which is not just search impressions, but search impressions by keyword. In other words, are you showing up in search impressions on the keywords that matter to you? I'll give you an example. Let's say you sell these beautiful purple coffee mugs. And if somebody's listening to audio only, I'm holding up a coffee mug. Let's say you show up number 25, for large coffee mugs. That's not really going to help you. If your search impressions are high, but you're showing up primarily on secondary search terms like coffee mug with, um, you know, coffee, and organic then, coffee, mug, you know that that's not a high converting core, um, keyword yes. for you. It doesn't matter as much. So make sure that you're also looking, that's number two, at search impressions, but by keyword at this time. Then you want to look at your competitive positioning. You want to see how higher your search visibility is versus your top competitors. And tools like Moz or SEM Rush, and by the way, I'm not an affiliate of either of these brands. Um, I happen to really, truly just love them. Those are key because sometimes, you know, you'll, ra you'll rank really high on something um, and it will be great, but again, your comp competition might be ranking higher. So make sure that you're also, and again, SEO is a competitive sport. I know that nowadays we're looking at most things in marketing as being more like co-opetition. In other words, we're really not competing with everybody, but we're all part of one big ecosystem. And I'm a big believer in that. I think that this, this paranoia around, oh, what are our competitors doing most of the time? It's not very well justified. But SEO is a competitive sport. You've got to feel competitive about it, even if you are otherwise the most peaceful, non-competitive person in the world. So you're going to look at your competitive positioning. How high are you ranking versus your competition? competition. And Definitely. that's really important. So those are, those are three. Um, do you want me to keep going or do you have a question? No, no, you can keep on. You can keep on going. Okay, so number four is search conversions. How well are your search rankings converting? Because again, I mean, darn it, 
if you're you're not if you're showing up high in search but you're not converting it could be a problem with the keywords that you're ranking on it could be a problem with your landing pages it could be dozens of different things but again your search conversions are going to tell you am i actually getting any roi at all out of my seo because big whoop um as i like to say if everybody's heard of you if they've heard of you but they're not buying or donating if you are a nonprofit or signing onto your petition, or if, if you're a cause, forget it. You, you need to convert. And then that's number four. Number five is again, go a little more granular. Now that you understand your search conversions, look at your search conversions by keyword. That will tell you which of your keywords are actually moving the needle, giving you some kind of an ROI. And I would say number six is your search conversions by landing page. Because again, if your search conversions are struggling or if they're wonderful, they're both dependent on both the keyword, like what did people search for and the landing page, the search, the keyword is going to tell you what the buyer's motivation is in part, because if someone is searching for a large coffee mug and that's, what's causing them to convert, then, you know, that giving people a nice substantial coffee mug is what they're looking for. If on the other hand, they're looking for, let's say pretty coffee mug, then it's the aesthetics of the mug that's causing the consumer to convert more. So those keywords that are cause that are bringing in the conversions, tell you your consumer's needs. So you right. really want to look at the search conversions by keyword. And by the way, this is an excellent coffee mug. <laughs> to me however as a gift so that again brings me to the next point though you also want to look at key conversions by landing page because you can have the best keywords in the world your consumers can be and the best keywords by which i mean they're well mapped to the customer journey you understand the consumer psychology you understand what's motivating your customers to buy you still will not be getting those cons um, conversions if you also don't have a landing page that delivers on the promise of whatever you're talking about in your product. In other words, you have to have a, a landing page that's got a good UX user experience that has a good call to action CTA and good offer as well as overall reflecting your brand values. So conversions by landing page is an absolutely critical metric. Those are your first six metrics. The seventh, on the other hand, is the gold metric. All of these are tactical metrics. In other words, they're going to tell you how well overall you're doing in your search operationally. Are you doing your search correctly in terms of are you identifying the right keywords? Are you mapping them to the customer journey to understand the role search plays in conversions and understanding your customer psychology? And are you designing decent landing pages with good CTAs that are on brand and have you put some decent offers out there? all of which are critical. But to really understand the answer to your question, which is how do we measure search ROI? There is one metric to rule them all, to do a little bit of a quote from Lord of the Rings here, paraphrase. And that metric is the lifetime customer value of customers that you acquired with search as a critical touch point in the customer journey as compared to the lifetime customer value of consumers you acquired through any other channel. Lifetime customer value is the golden metric. For every marketing channel you use, you've got to be measuring this metric above all. Because what mistake a lot of brands make is they're going to look at immediate conversions and just count the raw number of conversions, but they're not going to look at how profitable customers who come in on one channel versus another channel are. You could have a hundred customers you acquire via social media and a hundred customers you acquire via organic search and have one group of customers be twice as profitable as the other. We often found for a lot of our clients um, in the services business, and we continue to find that even, even nowadays, but the, the, it is evening out a little bit, that organic search is a better way of acquiring high lifetime customer value customers. They're more loyal. They have a greater need. 
and they tend to spend more with the company. And it's pretty obvious why. If you're putting ads out there on social media, let's say you're doing paid social, people might impulse buy from you. They're walking around, they're bored, they see an ad on Instagram, and they might make a low value purchase with you on an impulse. And then you really have to nurture that relationship to get high lifetime customer value. And there may not even be the potential for the high lifetime customer. On the other hand, if somebody's going out there with a need so serious that they're actually searching for it and you meet them at the point of that need with Mm -hmm. the right offer and you're acquiring them in that way through organic search, then you may have a customer for life and a very loyal one and a high value one at that. It's not always the case. This is obviously a little bit of an oversimplification. There are other factors that lead to high customer customer value versus low customer value. But at the end of the day, you want to be absolutely certain that you're tracking lifetime customer value as your chief metric in determining the ROI of your marketing campaigns, period. Um, So that's my seven. You want to measure both how customers are searching, what they're searching for, what motivations those are pointing to. You want to understand how search plays a role in the customer journey. You also, however, ultimately want to know, are the customers we're acquiring via search our best customers? They often are. And if not, how can we get better customers via search? Do we have to change something about our operations or our customer journey mapping or some other aspect of how we're marketing ourselves? If you can achieve all of that, you have truly got a handle on your SEO ROI. Perfectly, perfectly, rightly said. And this is also what we have also observed. I mean, so when we run paid campaigns for our clients and uh, you know we do social media and other stuff, but the quality of the leads that we go, uh, get from our SEO or from the organic activity, that the quality is, you know, unbeatable compared to any other campaigns that you have seen upon. And definitely the lifetime value that you have mentioned, it definitely is something that should be looked upon. And, you know, that can be one of the deciding factor because that is something that if people compare organic, or uh, let's say SEO with the paid activities, they see that, okay, if paid, I have to, you know, if I'm putting this much amount of money, I'm getting 100 leads, 1000 leads. In SEO, the leads count might be a bit less, but then the quality or the lifetime, you know, these things are something that is something if we measure compared to that, then we will be able to get the exact value or the importance of SEO. So rightly said. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're you're 100% right. And I think that people struggle with measuring search because, again, it's it's not a clear one-to-one conversion. You don't always convert people directly from organic search. You really do find that there's, you know, a, a point where you can't track every search appearance as part of the customer journey. You might show up organically. Someone may see that. It may build brand familiarity. It may build brand trust but it doesn't necessarily lead immediately to that conversion. So again, I'm not saying you're going to be able to measure every single search touch point and map that to customer value, but there's a remarkable amount of mapping back to customer value that you can do if you're smart about your metrics. I strongly recommend that people invest in three different kinds of tools. One is an all-purpose search tool. I've mentioned SEMrush, um, there's Moz, there's dozens of other brands out there, but get a good comprehensive SEO tool, one that's gonna track your rankings, how you're doing on different ranking factors. Definitely make sure that you you invest in something like that that has competitive intelligence also, because that competitive intelligence is critical. Then you want to make sure that you are taking full advantage of all of the free tools Google gives you. That's not really so much an investment of money because they are free, but it's an investment of time. Make sure you've got search consoles set up and also make sure that even if you're not running PPC, make sure you're using the Google Keyword Planner to understand the search landscape as well. And then finally, I want to make sure that everybody is investing in content because at the end of the day, with every algorithm update that Google pushes out there, it's 
a greater and greater focus on helpful content. Heck, one of their most recent updates was actually called the helpful content update. Helpful, yeah. So get yourself a good content tool that might look like using the Hemingway app, which is free to ensure high readability of your content. Remember that content written at like a fifth grade reading level tends to rank higher than, th than things that are written at a higher reading level because they're simpler and easier to read. Uh, it might mean I, I'm not a huge fan of just using Grammarly, but it's a critical tool in your arsenal. You might invest in some other more robust content planning and content optimization tools. Get a good content tool. So again, make sure you are fully maxed out in your knowledge of all of the wonderful free tools Google gives us, like Search Console me, and um, your Google Keyword Planner. It's an absolute must. Get a good all-in-one SEO tool and get a good content tool. However, that works for you, um, whether it's something that helps make your content more readable or helps you plan your content calendar. A lot of tools like HubSpot even come with this built in, but don't neglect your content operation. It is literally the heart and soul of your SEO. Definitely. Definitely. So since you were also mentioning about the Google Keyword Planner, so you know one thing that also comes into the SEO. Uh, metrics which we can see about it's about the keywords selection of the keywords play an important role in getting the results because those keywords are something that we get it implemented on the website and accordingly try to get the result for our client so what is the strategy that you should be suggesting for selection of the keywords should we be going with the high search volume should we mixing it with some low search volume should we going with some the keyword difficulty phase or you know if you can guide us on what are the metrics that we should be uh, going with by selecting the prominent or the best keywords that we can suggest for the client. You know that is always such a critical question. I'm a big fan of what I call the mid tail and long tail keywords. Well, I mean, not I call it, everybody calls it that. But those mid-tail keywords, I mean, you've heard it, a bunch of tool, terms used like the chunky middle. I'm not a big fan of that, although I have a chunky middle myself. Um, I would say don't, don't optimize on the short tail as much. Sometimes for some brands, it really does matter to have that short tail visibility. A lot of things in SEO really are relative and some people really need to be there on the short tail. But most, most brands should be focusing on the more specific keywords, the mid and the long tail keywords, because that's where the customer intent is closer to buying. Showing up on the short tail can matter if you need to get that visibility, but most of the time you really need to get those conversions and it's also going to be easier. So focus on the long tail and the mid tail. What that actually looks like in terms of search volume is going to vary by industry. We work with some very specialized, for instance, scientific laboratories where their short tail still only has a search volume of 300 searches per month because it's such a specialized term, but those 300 searches per month represent billions of dollars in business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the other hand, if you're B2C, your long tail could be millions, tens of millions of searches per month. So it's not so much the absolute search volume, it's the relative search volume. For the size of your industry, your long tail is going to look different, your short tail is going to look different. So it's the, the search volume that reflects that long to mid tail. And in some cases, it isn't even the search volume. You might have equal search volume on a very specific keyword, which therefore t counts in many ways as if it were a long tail, even if it has the same search volume as a quote unquote short tail keyword that's very non-specific. Um, I'll give you an example. We work with one scientific lab where a non-specific term for them might be scanning electron microscopy. Not a very high volume keyword. A uh, short tail keyword might be scanning electron microscopy services, which is what they offer. Now, on the other hand, there's another long tail keyword, scanning electron microscopy lab that actually converts better for them because services could be a commodity service, whereas people searching for a scanning electron microscopy lab 
are people who are more in their target audience and looking for a high-end service. It's a very small nuance, but that level of specificity from services to lab, in this case, mattered a tremendous amount. Definitely, definitely. Got it, got it. That, that's how that's you know, kind of understand the importance of planning of the key. So now, uh, since, uh, you know, uh, 2023 has essentially started, so we would also love to know a bit about what are your thoughts on how do you think that the SEO will be evolving in this year or in 2023 that the digital marketer should focus upon? That's a really great question. Um, and people are nervous about it, understandably so. Uh, because we are hearing so much about things like chat GPT and how is that going to change content marketing and are people even going to have content marketing jobs and uh, so many different questions out there. I can say there's three things that I see happening. One, I think the algorithm is going to keep shifting to filter out AI generated content. There is a huge difference between AI generated content and content that is um, generated by real humans, shall I say? I would say it's going to get easier for the search algorithms to tell. And I feel that the helpful content update is in part cracking down on that AI generated content, because what does it do? It check, it's cracking down on thin content and AI generated content. We've played around with it. We've tried it out ourselves. It's often repetitive. It's often thin. It's, it's low quality. Definitely. So absolutely. I would say um, you're going to see a big crackdown on thin, poor quality and thus AI generated content. Next, what you're going to see is a greater emphasis on deeper content. Again, this goes back to what we're seeing in the helpful content update. Longer blog posts are going to be cool again. That kind of thin content also is often short content. You're going to see that those of us who are writing and creating deep and thoughtful content, deep um, ebooks, long or longer blog posts, thoughtful and detailed interactive elements that are rich in the kind of information that people want. That's going to be what ranks. And then third, and most importantly, search fragmentation. 40% of Gen Y consider TikTok to be a viable search engine for their needs. Increasingly, people are moving away from Google for specialized searches, and they're going directly to big e-commerce platforms like your Ebays, your Amazons, your Etsys to simply find products there. They're not searching for them anyplace else. Um, they're searching for them directly on the platforms that are where they're going to make the purchase. The next thing that you are that I'm seeing is in terms of that third trend, uh, people are using social media as a search platform. So for the longest time, it was something of an urban legend that social media matters directly for your organic search rankings in Google. And we were always telling people, no, not not really. You can't you, you know, you can't tweet your way to higher search rankings and you still can't. But people are now again, they're searching on TikTok, they're searching on Instagram, they're not even going to the major search engines people are bypassing google and they're going to search on social they're going to search on for instance reddit um they're going to search on tiktok they're going to search on instagram they're going to search on pinterest and so you need to stop thinking google first or google only when it comes to seo and instead start thinking about what are the platforms that my customers treat as a search engine so if you want to reach gen y nowadays you need to treat TikTok as a search engine. You need to think about what are the, um, what are, for instance, the hashtags that your customers are looking for on TikTok. If you are targeting millennial moms, you need to think of Pinterest as a search engine. If you're um, targeting B2B consumers, they're probably going to search platforms or online forums that target people within their industry more than they're going to Google in some cases. So certainly still think about the search engines, think about Google, think about Bing to some extent, but 
Remember, search is getting very fragmented. Act accordingly. You're going to have to show up in more places where previously you were seeing it as a broadcast channel, right? We saw social media as a broadcast channel, didn't we? We saw online forums as forums that we controlled. We were trying to bring people into customer communities. We were trying to get that conversation flowing there, but as more as like a focus group or some other controlled kind of conversation or a conversation that um, was bringing us qualitative data. That's not what that's for anymore. These are all search engines now. Everything's a search engine. Walking down the street is a search engine, thanks to push notifications. And so don't think of search as search engine first. Think of search instead of where are people going to actively seek out information. Search is the seeking out of information. Very lucky and very informative, you know, advice you have given upon that we do not as SEO, like when we are planning somewhere in the future, we do not need to restrict ourselves only to Google. We need to see where our users or where our customers are searching upon that. Because when that becomes a search engine for us, if people are using a lot of, you know, uh, spending a lot of their time on Instagram, on TikTok and these all things. So that is also a search engine for us. And while we are optimizing these all things, we need to check that the content that we are, you know, uh, putting on TikTok, putting on Instagram, how can they be SEO optimized? So if you are working upon that, then definitely that will be something that, uh, you know, we'll be getting good results in the topic. So very informative and very helpful advice that you have given. Thank you. Any last piece of advice that you would love to give to the businesses on how they should look after their SEO activities? I would say stop trying to outwit the algorithm with anything other than good quality content. That's what it is at the end of the day. It's a content game. It's not anything else. It's about good quality content. And good quality content means that you are meeting customers where they are with the information that they're seeking out. Sounds really, really simple. But at the end of the day, if you do five things, one, understand your customer's needs. What what are they coming to you for? Two, understand your customer journey. How are they coming to you? Three, understand your customer's expectations and that's in context what are they what are they hoping to get based on what they're getting from other organizations other companies your dare we say it, your competition for understand your customer relationships how does search bring them to you as somebody who's going to deliver on and meet their needs what do they expect after that search conversion because that's what's going to lead to the high customer lifetime value it's not enough to have the search bring people to your door um, that search also has to bring the right customers to your door and then finally understand the value that you deliver understand your value proposition people often say it's a real struggle to maintain our content marketing and obviously logistically not everybody loves to write not everybody has the time to write there's certainly challenges there but at the end of the day a lot of the reasons why um, people struggle with their content marketing is because they don't have that handle on their value proposition so once you have that the content will flow very naturally because you will know what value you bring to the marketplace and you'll be excited to tell the world about it sounds a little bit pollyanna-ish sounds a little bit kumbaya but if you passionately believe in what you do and this problem that you're solving for your customers it becomes that much easier to write about your customers problems and journey and meet them where they are with great content so understand your customer journey and you will be a happy organization Definitely, definitely. This is some kind of helpful advice that you know we should be understanding the user journey and based on the user journey, if we plan our SEO strategy, based on the you know user journey, if we plan the keyword these all things for each and every stage, then definitely this is something that we can get good results. Absolutely. So with this, we have come to the end of today's episode. It was pleasure having you, Krishna, with us and get a lot of insights on the SEO metrics and how we can ensure. ROI oriented work for our client. Thank you so much and I look forward to host your game. Thank you so much Prince. It's been an honor to be here. Thank you.